The Sims. There's so many, all different kinds of spin-offs. But one particular spin-off I wasn't aware even existed was Sim Animals, developed and published by EA in the January of 2009. I did wonder, why haven't I heard of this game? But I guess I was far too busy with my GCSEs and pretending to be a hipster to care about a new Sims game. <laughs> Nah, I'm pretty sure, I'm almost certain I spent all my time becoming a fan of shite on Facebook, changing my bebo skin, and maybe perhaps uploading an album of assorted selfies with various different filters on, from sepia to black and white, aptly titled me. Anyway, as someone on Wikipedia puts it, one takes on the role of a disembodied hand as opposed to a physical sim. So I've got, I guess we have got pooey hands, guys. Join me as I embrace nature and become one with it to rule over all these creatures. We were born to rule over you. However, I'm not going to complete the games 100%. No, no. I'm just going to unlock all the areas. Oh yeah, enough of that. Without any further ado, on with the game! Greeted with some delightful music, I patriotically select the flag that of the United Kingdom. Rule Britannia! Britann Backyard is the title. Welcome to the forest. Make sure there's enough food for visiting animals if you build trust with them and make them happy. Then they will move in and start a family. When the happy bar is full, it will unlock another part of the forest. <laughs> well, that's that then. Time to partake in a tutorial of sorts. Struggling to shake a tree, but once I've got my bearings, now I'm grabbing clouds and chucking squirrels in the water. I'm thriving, putting all sorts in my little backpack. Ah, the pause menu. This is a big backyard, isn't it? I take some time to mull over the icon glossary. I'm somewhat amused by what I've happened upon. Icons such as, I'm about to shake out my roots. I want to have a baby. <laughs> an animal has passed away. A very questionable icon for an animal has been born. A graduation cap, letting us all know that an animal has grown up. And my personal favorite, I'm getting gold. How relatable. Once all that fun's ended, it is now time for me to force the squirrel to eat from my hand. However, the cheeky bastard distrusts me, but I persevere and it sniffs my hand and now the fella wants to move in. Accompanied with the animals moving in and out is this initially delightful music. which eventually becomes extremely grating, which is lovely when it gets stuck in your head when you're trying to go to sleep. Yeah. Overwhelmed by the demands of the plants, we eventually attract another squirrel. Then I'm told to blow into the mic. <sighs> I'm taken aback. Suddenly traumatized about potentially having a Sims 2 castaway experience, thankfully. Blowing isn't essential in this game, so once I've tickled a squirrel and hit a raccoon with a bolt of lightning, my backyard animals are happy and I'm clearly ready to take on bigger challenges deeper in the forest. <laughs> How rude. On to Tiny Creek. Just a little ways into the forest brings us to Tiny Creek. That little trickle of water may not seem like much, but it's the source of life in this area of the forest. So a goal in this area was to pollinate this flower, but they all bloody died. And after an open return bloody round the world trip on, I don't know, fucking mega bus, struggle bus. As in generations and generations of unhappy squirrels have been born and I've still not pollinated this bloody plant. And there's nothing I can do to make these creatures happy. So you know what? I decide to put them all in my bag. Why did they keep coming to Tiny Creek though? Have they not heard the rumours that it's terrible and tiny? There's no room at the inn, Mary and Joseph. Look at my bag, stuffed to the fucking brim. My proverbial cup runneth over with the creatures of Tiny Creek. But I did it, didn't I? Now we have a rose bush, which in turn attracts rabbits. 
So after persevering and being weighed down by the burdens of the animal visitors to Tiny Creek, I finally attract a rabbit and ultimately unlock our next area, <laughs> which is the skinny legend that is Thin Woods. <laughs> Work, I guess. And here we have Thin Woods. This area of the forest is ready to thrive with several young trees. If only somebody could do something about all that junk. So, off to pastures anew, forgetting I had all these animals in my haversack from previous pastures. So, I go back and release all them animals into pastures prior so I can have a clean slate in my greener pastures that I have just unlocked. Why did, why did I write that? I'm, I'm, what's going on? Back to the task at hand anyway. At the thin woods. We must rid the woods of the junk by raining on them. And apparently it works. The tutorial be like, while you're at it, do the rest, bitch. Oh, piss off. Once we have rid thin of junk, we unlock a rare plant. Oh yes, we really cleaned up thin woods. All the happy animals and healthy plants here in the forest is really benefiting from your efforts. Oh yeah, abandoned farm now. This long abandoned farm is a great place for the forest to grow. Rumour has it that some owls have been checking out the area for nesting opportunities. Ooh. One must attract an owl. The owl is a fierce sleigh hunty swag. <laughs> oh, I guess they're gonna eat the squirrels. Attracted by the pooey hand, an owl arrives in town. Now reluctantly, the goal here is to get an owl to eat a squirrel. But oh my god, look guys, this squirrel is called Elliot with two T's. <laughs> Girl, what? This bitch distracted me and I was unaware of the hedgehog that snuck into my farm. I really don't like hedgehogs. Ever since I seen that roadkill one, it was on the path when I walked to work for like six months or something and it was like a weird spiky glove. I, I don't like them at all. But I used to like them, but like, like, oh, when I used to be walking by a dog and happened upon them in the middle of the road, I picked them up and put them on the grass. But now, no, I detest them. Disgusting little cretins. But uh, look, I'm distracted now. I knew it was coming. The owl ate the fucking squirrel. I thought this was supposed to be a kid's game. Rosie the squirrel, RIP. However, I jog bit beat up the owl. Pity though, cause the wrong animal died. The wrong animal died. Oh, how wonderful. Beautiful, this picturesque abandoned farm is really thriving. Part of the forest now. The owls really seem to love their new homes. <laughs> um, sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but the owl never moved in. The owl never moved in. Now on to Waterfall Pool. In this secluded corner of the forest lies Waterfall Pool. Life teems here and you might even catch a glimpse of a sneaky weasel. My goal here is to attract a duck. And look, a spontaneous bastard fire killed the duck I attracted and murdered all my water lilies. And oh boy, I, did I catch more than a glimpse of that bloody weasel. It ate my rabbit. And why are there so many? weasels here now they're having a mother's meeting with the ducks i'm done with that though gorgeous is there anything more peaceful than this serene secluded waterfall pool will the next area be as appealing when you're done with it junkyard yeah i'm sure it will the forest is going to have a tough time reclaiming this old junkyard maybe with your help this area could turn into a thriving ecosystem look at the bloody state of this place and they want us to grow a juniper bush. I very much doubt a juniper bush wants to live here. So whilst I melt away in Marty Crane's armchair with this acid rain and successfully didn't make the skunk move in, I met with this. Fantastic, the junkyard has been cleaned up good and proper. And once again, the forest rules this area. What will you do for an encore? What are you on about? Big Lake. The beautiful big lake is the centerpiece of the forest. There is plenty of opportunity for life to thrive here, especially for some water-loving birds. Attract a swan is the initial goal. Alas, <laughs> I'm not happy after making many a lily pad and reeds. The bastards that reside in the lake of the big 
are still miserable. However, after tickling some swans and geese, I get the inevitable congratulations. Stunning, the pristine big lake with all the happy waterfowl is like something out of a painting. How will you top this? Onto abandoned cabin now. Abandoned cabin, deep in the forest, among several long decaying trees, is this old abandoned cabin. But even in this spooky places like this, even in this spooky places, life will grow a mischievous Fox's prowl. Oh, wonderful. Predators, you know what this means. More deaths. One must attract a rabbit. Alas, the animals are AWOL. So I decide to pinch a rose from a prior level, and I'm told there's nothing foxes love more than rabbits. Great. Oh my god, guys, I've become attached to this rabbit called Ethan. He's called fucking Ethan. Look at him. Bless him, the poor bloke. He's rolling over to get tickled. I don't want him to be eaten. So once another rabbit arrives, who I'm reluctant to feed to absolutely famished Ying the fox. But look at Ethan. He's happy as bloody Larry. Maybe the fox could perhaps eat Jimmy? But suddenly, I'm left gobsmacked. Why are the fox and the rabbit's mates, may I ask? And once the porcupine is well and truly frigged off, I attempt to sacrifice this bloke to the fox, but bless him. Look at them, they curl up to next to each other. It's so quaint and like a, like a painting, isn't it? Oh, but of course, whilst my guard was down, vulnerabilities on show for the world to see. Fucking Emma the fox came in and killed Ethan. She ate, but not in a good way. Ethan, the one little critter I genuinely liked in this game. What an actual slag. And here's fucking Jazz the Fox now. With my sorrowful mood, created by the death of my only friend in this game, I get my congratulations screen. Terrific. It's, it's amazing how such a spooky place like this abandoned cabin can become such a happy home for so many. Who's the many that are happy? Who are, the, who are the many that are happy? Not me. Just before I head to my next area, I see that the tables are turning with a rabbit beating up a fox. <laughs> Karma in it. Big meadow now. <laughs> this big meadow with its large riverbank is the heart of the forest. The largest animals like bears and deer make their homes here. So once I've planted an apple tree, we must attract a deer. Deer are elegant and graceful plant eaters. Fill the forest with yummy plants. Okay. Suddenly a bear arrives and he's called Bloody Matthew. <laughs> Matthew. Tonight, Matthew, I'm gonna be a bear. Who the heck's naming these blokes? And I'm getting sick to the back of my bloody teeth of these animals. As now the bear and the deer are having a battle of wits, ultimately making the deer leave town. But eventually, eventually, guys. A deer flattens out this nice grassy area. Oh, I force a cute deer to move in and manipulate a bear to eat from my hand. Wonderful. The big meadow has become the forest's revitalised downtown. Such a variety of plants and animals living together is really a beautiful thing. If you say so, mate. If you say so. Creepy bog. On the outskirts of the forest lies this creepy bog. It has been rumoured that the elusive wolf lives nearby. Ah <laughs> uh, yes, creepy bog. Re somewhat reminds me of that where they film that particular ITV drama. <laughs> well, we got a duck now, so all that's left is to attract the wolf. Wolves are at the top of the food chain. They like to eat animals of all type. So after getting a variety of ducks in, after all, variety is the spice of life. We finally get the wolf. And we're not gonna lie, I'm kinda scared. But you know what? I purposefully didn't learn any of the names of these ducks in order to not become attached to them. And there you have it, we've killed a sleeping duck. And you know what they say, while sleeping ducks lie or something. Oh, I'm so incredible. You've brought happiness to this creepy bog and to the forest as a whole, congratulations. But don't stop now, there's still much to do in all areas of the forest. Listen, love. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. <laughs>
She's given the beginning of Sims Busting Out and Glover mixed together. But no funky music, just animal music. Oh, how delightful though. I treat myself to a new file and assume what I'm calling poo is spelling out poo. And is the name of my file perhaps? I don't know. I can't see anything. Now for our me, guest A. Yes. Now to begin. Look at this weird intro that I've seen a million times trying to make it work. And there, uh, every time it's more exhilarating than the last. We're shown a few basics about the wee world of sim animals and how to use our glover, along with instructions with many a missing letter. So I'm just hoping for the best. Instructions like taking acorns out of our bag, closing our bag, putting the acorns down, opening our bag again, and putting the acorns back in our bag once again. And while all that faffing about was enough to attract a bloody squirrel, you know what? I'm not a fan of squirrels myself. So sorry, squirrel girl 420. The state of it though. Absolute vermin. I hate those weird little noises they make as well. They're like, no, no, I'm not about that. So you know what that means? Time to drop it in the middle of the water. What it deserves. <laughs> but look, just a couple of nuts. And there he is, lying on his back, begging for more, emitting that happy energy. How pathetic. And now they fully trust me. I can now place this squirrel in my bag if I want. And I can put up to five animals in my bag. Not as blessed with the abundance of space as my bag and the DS version though, I see. I earn my first medal, way of the squirrel. And with all that said and done, their tutorial has abruptly pissed off and left me on my own to figure out the rest. So with all that commotion, I seem to have attracted a robin. However, this is not my robin. As British bird lover, this is not my robin. Must be some sort of American robin. But in the spirit of beloved presenter and activist Chris Packham, I befriend the robin. However, I seem to have attracted an evil cat in the process. The state of that bastard coming into my place and fucking with everything. So I swiftly pack up the robin into my bag with my newfound medal, way of the robin, and head to the next area of grassy glen. It's all a bit much, in it? It turns out it's the same as the DS version. Shake the plants, shake the seed, make the plants grow with our glover. And after befriending a rabbit and a mouse, I now earn myself the medal that off the way of the rabbit. So after the game broke and replaying all that thus far again, I head to Foggy Creek, which is somewhat dramatic. Nature be nature in, and we have to produce a child deer, the good old fashioned way by grabbing a deer with your disembodied gloved hand and dropping it onto the other deer. And there we have it. Nature's just so beautiful. And now they want us to have a squirrel do what with the baby deer? I quickly decide to up and leave this area and head to Castle Hill with Ian. The tutorial makes me aware that I've been doing very well thus far and have earned a reward of the ability to knock down trees. A blessing and a curse, I guess. And here he is, the force to be reckoned with, a beaver or a Eava. Well, turns out the fella's called Alan, not Ian. Turns out the fella is called Alan, not Ian. Bloody dog. And after struggling to find the narrow part of the river, I gift the Alan, the gift of a stick. And Alan starts Alan in. Weird crazy, what is going on? What a couple of twigs can do, eh? Our reward is unlocking an oak. Ah, new area unlocked. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Dry Gulch with two boars, Stinkette and York. <laughs> How do they create these names? Dry gulches. Very dry. Oh, well, turns out the boars have been fighting over the mushrooms and do not like each other. And a rat has also managed to survive here, everyone. FYI. Luckily, one has a, a maple seed in my backpack, ready to bring life back to dry gulch. I carefully place it on the grassy area. And what the fuck? These boars, they fucking ate it before I got chance to fertilise it. So I go and grab myself another two maple seeds, just in case I ever mishap again. And just before my successful attempt to fertilise the tree, the fucking rat ate the seed as well. So in my anger, I chuck it. All of a sudden... Oh, fuck! All of a sudden, the boars are in love, and I have achieved the way of the dove. I make my way to the next area of River Ridge, with our Belinda and Bronson the bears. 
and we're off to a flying start as Belinda is thinking of leaving because I gave her the wrong bloody food. Um, and don't bite the hand that feeds you, innit? Oh my god, and Belinda the bitch has eaten our Alan. What the hell? But there is light at the end of the tunnel as we have unlocked a blue jay. However, brought back to the disgusting reality that Stinkat has been murdered. I'm out of here. Just as the bear has decided to scran on the skunk, I can't cope with it anymore, so on I go to Big Rock. What? With a big rock comes big responsibility. Much like a deity, I have been gifted the power of casting lightning bolts, and I'm commanded to use this power wisely. Um, porcupines live here, by the way. Honestly, why would I even want to cast lightning bolts? What is it for? This area seems like it can fend for itself for all I care, though, so I abruptly frig off to the next area. Misty Bog. It's, it must be Misty Water's cousin or something. She's from the bio. And here we have Bert and Suishi. Oh yes, how quaint and tranquil. However, looks can be deceiving as this water is polluted. Apparently this is an opossum, but everyone, I can help this poor opossum survive in this polluted area for just the cost of two rats becoming residents here. And here we are friend with a rat. I've just got such a way with animals, just so in touch with nature. However, it dawns on me that opossum's favorite food is a rat. I've just befriended Ace the rat for it to be this bastard opossum's next meal. What kind of hell am I living in? I do have my favourites though, so I force the opossum to scran on the other rat because I don't know its name. And after some internal tree battle and all the trees begin, <laughs> begin collapsing, you know what, I'm out of here. Onwards and upwards to Old Orchard. How stunning and beautiful, but looks like people deserted the farm because the water became polluted. And now it's overrun by rats. Um, by the way, an O lives here. So, the evil O keeps on scranning me little mates. Me little rat mates, that is. And may I ask why this raccoon bloke be like... My reward for forcing some rabbits to live here by tickling them is a jack-o'-lantern, or what I'm assuming an oho lantern is. Oh, it's gone. With the next medal challenge being getting a fox to sneak up on a sleeping deer, I decide, you know what, I'm not about that. And then I see my rabbit is in a battle of wits with some predator, so I head to the next place. Junkyard. I wonder if it's like the DS junkyard where we rain on junk and make it disappear. Pollution cured. Wait, Agatha the rat is here, alive and well, and resurrected. Could this mean that the animals don't die? Once I've befriended our Agatha, I buy my time waiting for these bastard badgers to eventually awaken and inevitably eat my mate. And just as predicted, but always as shocking, the evil twat badgers have eaten my precious Agatha while I was distracted. I thought they liked mashed potato. Anyway, to celebrate the the badgers give birth to a fucking child. Vulgar acts going on here, everyone. I'm sick of this game now. Heartbroken and woeful, I travel to my final area, Danger Woods. Just a quick one. What the hell has happened in Danger Woods? The train wreck looks like the source of pollution. Can you dam off the polluted pool? I don't know, but I'm sure a beaver probably can. But where the hell am I gonna get a beaver? I'm pretty sure they're all extinct from all those bloody predators. Miraculously, I happen upon beloved Alan, and he's looking awfully green. And after befriending him, I whack him in my bag. You're coming with me, mate. We're off to build a dam. Alas, back in Danger Woods, a wolf, aka wolf, has made its presence known. This fucking wolf just be killing everything, and I've really been forcing our Alan to work hard, making his dam whilst avoiding and protecting him from the countless clever predators in Danger Woods. But bless the bastard, we have cured pollution and attracted an old coot, thanks to Alan, which swiftly gets murdered by the wolf. And why's this bear got a twig in its mouth? You know what? This woods is miserable and so am I, so time to call it a day here. You may be thinking, end of the video perchance? <laughs> well, I think not. Someone somewhere thought this game was good enough for a sequel. 
goes by the name Sim Animals Africa, released for the Wii and Nintendo DS of October of the same year. Yeah, really. So, without any time to waste, let's dive right into that. Much like the prequel, Sim Animals takes us to Africa, but in a Sim Animals kind of way. We are greeted into our tutorial by this bird. She's telling me all these falsities that she's called Mahiri. However, I beg to differ. It's our Chanel. She's an African grey. As a specimen of one of the most intelligent species in Africa, it's my job to show you around and help you get off to the right start. Okay. Not everybody is graced with my superior flying skills. <laughs> What the hell? How rude! Alas, if you want to move around, simply touch an edge of the touch screen to move in that direction. This weird little jingle plays after I do anything successfully in this game. it's actually quite amusing. I can't help but burst out laughing every time I hear it. However, she's such a little bitch our Chanel. Now since she can't fly up into a tree and grab her seeds like I can, what a patronising little bitch. So she's gonna follow me around for a while. If I need a hint or miss the witty conversation, <laughs> there's nothing witty about you love. After completing our tutorial, I head to the initial level, Meerkat Meadow. It attracts meerkats, aardvarks and elephants. It's a nice place, even if the best looking animal, the African Grey, is slightly underrepresented. She's just having a laugh, our Chanel. Just so cheeky. I clench some butterflies in my fist, almost like a toddler, and meet Sputnik, the elephant. Look at them sadness in his eyes. He's seen some shit. He's probably played on My Sims Sky Heroes. Bless his little cotton socks. And well, <laughs> what the hell, we did it. We are treated to this delightful illustration and a congratulations from our Chanel. Let's try another location and see if we can find a female grey parrot <laughs> or some other animals. At the map screen, choose the savannah or the river's edge. Oh, I'm slightly torn on what area do I opt for first. I go for River's Edge, just because that animal looks slightly cunty. And River Edge music is also kind of serving. Anyway, this isn't the rainforest, but at least it's near the river. It's lush with plant life. It's almost fit for a parrot, but you'll have to make do with the gazelles and crocs. I happen upon a Venus flytrap and become friends with a crocodile. And I force the gazelles to be mates, but they're not having it. And the next thing you know, there's a child gazelle. Just call me Ms. Ma matchmaker. Oh, and here she is. The slag Margaret the Croc. Very clearly a girl because she has lipstick and eyelashes and all that rouge. However, the bitch is thinking of eating my gazelles. I'm having none of that in my Africa. However, I'm very amused by Steve the Aardvark. He's just chilling, and how delightful we have made River's Edge into a happy place. Congratulations! Some might say the grey parrots have big mouths. Yes, we talk a lot, but it's always very clever. Now that you've been up and close with the crocodiles, you really know who has a big mouth. I can move to my next area, but before I do, I want to see a croc being born. And here he is, Troy. And bloody hell, I realise these gazelles have been at it like rabbits. Look how many child gazelles there are now. And with all that said and done, I swiftly move on to the next place. Nile's ruins. And Nile, Nile's gotta have it. A river snakes through the Egyptian ruins. Wait, do a voice. A river snakes through the Egyptian ruins here. If only we had an aardvark to keep the termites from eating the trees. Hmm, you know what? That's not a bad idea. I'm so clever. Shut up. Shut up, Chanel. I head back to a prior place, following the advice from our Chanel, and I stuff some bitch aardvark in my bag. But she fights back and gets out. But you know what? You can always rely on good old Steve. And for Steve, I give him clenched in my disembodied glove fist. 
a painted lady. Well, I guess this hippo is a girl. Look at the state of that slap on her face. And she's giving my idiot dog vibes here. Oh no, suddenly the place has gone incredibly stinky. There are stink lines all over the place. And what the hell happened to this hippo? We muster on with the task at hand and use the power of the hippo yawn. I was going to send R Chanel to sleep, but instead I opt for this giraffe and look at her. Poor old Julia, the state of her. After a lot of perseverance, we've got a baby giraffe. Congratulations, I'm impressed. Of course, I did give you a rather good idea for the termites. Sure up. Still, you're proving yourself, my fledgling. Stick with me. I will well conquer all of Africa. Excuse me, Chanel. What the fuck? Winston Churchill eat your heart out, innit? We'll conquer all of Africa. Ooh, Britannia! Anyway, we can't get to jungle ruins yet, so we'll have to touch base in the savannah, firstly. Ah, uh, the scenic savannah. Zebras come for the barley, and the lions come for the zebras. Eating zebras is rather messy, though. I myself prefer nuts or the occasional snail. <laughs> no one asks what you eat. No one cares about you. After spreading three units of barley, homie. Oh my god. Homie, the zebra is visiting us, guys. Holy shit. Homie. So you know what? I go and bloody befriend him, don't I? And you know what? Of course, anything I like gets kills and the fucking lion kills him. No worries to be had here in the savannah as Homie has swiftly been replaced by Irish the Zebra. And I've fallen completely in love with this baby zebra. Look how cute it is. Oh my god. Slightly distracted by the lion eating Yang the Zebra and burping after woods. But we also have a lion cup too. Congratulations. I guess you can call yourself the lion tamer now. And you did okay with the zebras too. Of course, neither of those animals is as bright and clever as the handsome grey parrot. No one... Oh, what? You, shut up. 50% of the animals unlocked. We unlocked this random contraption, the scare hopper, that makes grasshoppers appear less often. I've only seen one grasshopper, but slay. The evil scare hopper, though, distracted me. This bitch lioness ate my baby zebra. The evil, evil bitch. She'll begin to cough in approximately two days. What the fuck? I hate this game. Oh, but no worries, everyone. Cosmo has arrived to replace the... You know what? Frig this game. I have myself a little break. Treat myself, as it were, to some home cooking, some vegetables, a tahini platter for me and my family. And once I calm myself down, I take myself to the next area of muddy lakes. You need to be clever to ensure you don't run out of water. If you do, the plants and animals won't thrive. But don't worry, I have smarts to spare and I'll help. How kind of our Chanel. One spreads two phonios in the hopes of attracting a Ryan. Rhino. Ryan. <laughs> Dinner with Ryan. And may I ask, why do the rhinos look like this? Because we are such a fantastic pro gamer, we have unlocked this rain idol, which I guess we kind of need in this area where access to water is somewhat scarce. And whilst I was busy befriending this cheetah, well, it turns out the bloody rhinos have been at it too. Golly gosh, there is something in the air in it, as there's a child rhino. Anyway, look at this cheetah sleeping. Where'd you get that pillow from? Congratulations on you, you could do it, especially with my expert help. It's tricky when resources are scarce, but we, ahem, that is you, did it. Yeah, you got that right, bitch. Could this be the final area, taking us to the conclusion of this game? Perhaps, maybe, maybe. Jungle ruins. Gorillas are rumoured to be pretty intelligent for non-parrots, that is but they're quite moody, so if you can make them happy, that may be a feat worthy of a surprise. Oh, shut up. Once I've planted two banana trees, I attract Lansbury. Some may say Angela Lansbury, the gorilla who is obviously a girl with all that slap on her face. And I just want to say, what the hell? This is so horrific. She's so 
expressive. Listen, Lansbury, there's no situation you should be in where you're making a face like that, love. The lions must have been horrified by her face as Lansbury has now been scrammed. Oh, I miss her so. And all my other gorillas have upped and left. All I have to my name are these three lions, and they're not even on a shirt. But as the saying goes, as one lion leaves, a gorilla returns. And I don't know why he's purple, because I fed him something. And I'm worried sick about him. He can hear the clattering of my crockery as I'm, I'm trembling. So to stop myself from trembling, I put the lion in my bag. And what is this? Is this a miracle? Lansbury? Lansbury, my beloved, has been resurrected. I put the lions and the gorillas on separate sides of the water. We must protect the vulnerable gorillas. And I make Lansbury hit the gritty for this bloke. Suddenly, what? This is Chewy the raptor. It's being hatched from an egg. A reward for unlocking all of the lots. It was an egg in the middle. I didn't even notice it. And once I tickle the raptor, I receive my final congrats. Congratulations, you finally tamed the wilds of Africa with little help from your fearless, attractive and super genius side guide. Shut up. Yeah. Well, aren't we just off to an absolutely flying start? I also forgot about all these random missing letters in the Wii games, so you know what? I decided to treat myself and change the settings to fix it. And you know what? Because I've fixed it, I treat myself to writing an extra long poo, as it's our only chance to partake in the art of writing poo. Chapter 1. Good energy. When the earth is healthy, good energy is everywhere. Helping animals creates good energy. Every so often, people need to be reminded how important good energy is. Once I struggled to touch the zebra totem for uh, approximately ages, we finally touched the totem who tells us she is like from the valley. What's going on? So we just tried to pet this random zebra. It's giving Sims apartment pets vibes. I scratch her mouth, I scratch her ass, and then I don't know what that is, but we must pet Cassie in more itchy spots until we are friends. Oh, quick, pet her in the super itchy spot. And I'm not sure what this sound effect is from, but I am sure I'm getting some PTSD from it. What is it from? I'm trembling. However, I quickly forget about my trauma upon the realization that we can control animals in this game. Everyone, hold the fort. Stop the presses, stop the world. You can control the animals. One must gather good energy for this sad, sad land. After being awarded the bath time medal for kicking another zebra in the water, <laughs> which was very fun. Onto memory falls I go. Chapter two, the eight great tribes. A long time ago, humans and animals lived on this land together in harmony. Each tribe learned to communicate with the animals through totems. This is how the eight great tribes be it came to be. What an absolutely delightful place. A pleasure to be here in it. But wait, <laughs> look at this elephant. Why is a trunk so? Oh, and I've been given an ancient ring to play ring toss with some animals. What a pleasure. But bloody hell. The elephants are sad because their pond dried up. So I decide to tickle the elephant and play ring choss to cheer the tosser up in it. And now we have sufficient mates level, I can control it and find out how to possibly fix this pond. It is taking far too long to quench this elephant's thirst, however. But once I've filled the pond with my trunk water, I gain the power of fast elephant friendship. But let's just not forget that there is a zebra totem still on this land that needs your help. I tickle Kiki and like, well, let's have a Kiki in it. And her neck turns yellow for some reason. I diagnose a mild case of jaundice, alas. It turns out this is what happens when you have charm level one, but whatever. This elephant, everyone, everyone, this elephant is called Midge. Once I've grown some vegetables, I gain the almighty power to grab creatures. And you know what that means? 
time to do what they do on the film Racing Stripes and chuck a zebra called Marcel. Off to the energy stone and onwards to my next area. I decide to opt for the Fahari Savannah. <laughs> and what the fuck is this anthropomorphized lioness? <laughs> it's the bloody Queen of Sheba in it. Chapter 3 The Tree of Life. While travelling, a merchant from the Gazelle tribe discovered a beautiful valley. His eyes fell upon a glorious tree guarded by a band of sleeping gorillas. The Tree of Life. Oh yes, the savannah. I am the lion totem and I have watched the lions who live here lose their nobility. Oh, they have no class, haven't they? They share the land with the zebras now and it's outrageous. Well, that was a bit cringe, wasn't it? Gothy Kendall vibes. I don't know why you would want to ta help those tasty zebras out. <laughs> I guess that means more deaths, bloody hell. But I will be in control. I'm not sure whether I'm up for this, fellas. However, I have now been given a set of drums to make the lion strong again. I decide to tickle the lion, don't I? And what the, what the hell? Anyway, our friendship is high enough to play the drums with them. Okay, that drum game. Fucking Taiko no Tatsujin. That game, yeah. Do you remember that game? Well, that game eat your heart out, innit? And now we have gained the power. A power of fast lion friendship. This zebra totem is very, well, very excited to see me. Look at the usage of those sows. Our goal is to get them zebras to mate. And well, my initial attempt at flirting was, well, questionable to say the least. But we powered through and with a round of frolicking and very near misses of accidentally kicking the bitch, we finally do the mate. Ah, oh, nature's so beautiful. Look, a baby zebra. And now the fast zebra friendship power has been won. However, one has not earned enough of that good energy to move on to the next place. So I reluctantly tickle one of these lions, gathering up that precious good energy. And I'm abruptly told that the oasis needs my help too. Chapter four, the branch. Sneaking past the gorillas, the captivated merchant reached out to take a branch. Snap. The snap of the branch awoke the gorillas who jumped and began to chase the merchant. The merchant fled with his prize, losing the gorillas in a nearby grove of banana trees. One is welcomed into the oasis by the fabulous, the fabulous hippo totem. Turns out the hippos want some more water to swim in, so I must befriend a hippo to discover how to get more water. So after some intense tickling, I may or may or not have injured this peculiar looking bloke. A well-known fact is that digging is a hippo's talent, so I dig two holes and restore the water to the oasis. Have your hippo take a well-deserved drink. No. And now, like a broken record, I am now have the power of fast hippo friendship. Before I leave for the next area I've unlocked, I opt for a tickle of this non-binary elephant and accidentally plant the food I was supposed to feed to the hungry, hungry hippo. Oh, I'm such a torment, aren't I? Chapter five, the magic tree. Safely home, the merchant planted the branch. The next day, a magic tree grew. The merchant discovered that magic trees helped the surrounding plants grow. Later, he snuck back to the tree of life and gathered more branches. So here I am in Swallow Steps, greeted with a aye from the gazelle totem, clearly from the north of England in it. So it is a very dangerous area here with these uncanny lions. Please help the gazelles create a safe home so they can raise babies. Oh well. Help a gazelle use their dodge talent on a lion to tire it out. Just make sure to survive the chase. Excuse me, what? Well, as it so happens, this apparent talent in dodging isn't much of a talent. And after many attempts to successfully dodge the required amount of times, you know what? You're amazing. However, it might be time to increase the size of your herd. So next on the agenda is to find a fitty and have some kids. However, it dawns on me that I, the almighty poo, has led the gazelles into extinction. Because my many attempts, I used a different gazelle. 
Anyway, all I have left is bloody Thompson the baby. What the fuck am I meant to do with you, mate? And you know what? I'd be bloody gutted if anything bad happened to him. The Adam to my hypothetical Adam and Eve. So I make myself useful and head off to the next area in Volcano Gulch. Chapter 6, The New King. The merchant sold the trees to neighbouring tribes to gain their trust. The whole land began to thrive and everyone was happy. The merchant gained power and declared himself the king of the eight tribes. How curious and interesting. Welcome from the Rhino Totem. OMG, everyone. The rhinos anxious and not to mention quite thirsty. This steaming and rumbling rock is causing a disturbance. If only you could destroy the rock. Who knows what it might uncover. Um, my guess is on like a hot spring or a volcano. Anyway, oh Camilla. Oh Camilla the rhino. How apt and lord. Look at them lashes. <laughs> what the hell? I take advantage of my new power of charging into things and... Yeah. Very powerful. However, we need to become strength. So I ring toss with our Camilla until she can toss no more. And while it turns out that, whilst I've been preoccupied with all this tossing, those the people have left, like the zebras, and have been replaced by the weird lions. But yeah, I break the rock and you know what? It was a hot spring. Anyway, we go to Long Neck Plateau now. Chapter 7. The King's Fortress. Over time, the king grew afraid that the tribes would try to steal his power. He built a fortress around the Tree of Life to protect his prize. Little did he know that the fortress's walls prevented the magic trees from helping the land. Oh, how lovely. Alas, once a marula orchard flourished here, but not anymore. Bummer. <laughs> If only we had a marula fruit, we could regrow the orchard and perhaps my friend the hippo totem will know how to find him. Okay, so we get to chat into the camp icon that is the hippo totem and it will take a hippo with level 2 strength to dig up this elusive fruit. So it looks like more fucking ring toss I guess. Oh no way, it's the drumming game. Oh my god, I drum and drum and drum bum 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 bum. And I get carried away, I'm drumming and I've got my two star strength, but after foraging away for this evasive fruit and grow a beautiful orchard full of that tree, my next task is to do something with a level two strength giraffe and I ain't feeling like drumming or tossing with these giraffes. They're really freaky, I don't like them. So I move on to Mwamba River. Chapter eight. The fall of the fortress. Without the power from the magic trees, crops died and communication with the animals was lost. The tribes blamed the king for these hardships and stormed his fortress. Scared for his life, the king blamed the tree of life for the problems. And did you know that elephants, the skin of elephants have, is about one inch thick everywhere around the bodies? Ooh. Everyone, it's nighttime here, and it's the home of the crocodiles, a grumble. The crocodiles are hungry. Control them and chomp for gazelles. Slurp. Um, what? This game, man. One is a changed man after scranning down four gazelles. This bloke can't be that hungry to eat that many gazelles, right? Anyway, I'm told that the crocodiles' tummies are no longer empty. Um, well, I didn't realise I was eating on behalf of the whole tribe. <laughs> What's going on? How does that even work? I get this good energy up by tickling the zebra and drowning our Delia Smith. And it's also kind of gross because these animals are actually infested with lice. Once my energy stone is full to the brim, I can now go and rescue the tree of life. So with no time to waste, I head to the temple of life. Chapter 9 the sick tree. The mob tried to tear down the tree of life, but it could not be destroyed. Frustrated, they blocked the tree of life's magical water sources with giant stones. The tree of life became sick, the surrounding lands fell into despair, and the people left. Oh, how sombre, mournful, even melancholic, welcoming into the temple of life. Here, the gorilla totem tells me that I'm just in time grunt. The gorillas, they kept the tree healthy with their magic chest pound and to cure the tree, a gorilla needs to call from to it 
from the great altar. So I'm assuming that I have to destroy these stones that are blocking the tree, causing this bad energy. But I can't be arsed chatting up a new bitch. So we're going to grab our trusty old Camilla. She'll do the trick. She's been around the block a couple of times. One by one, I return the water source to the tree and getting that good energy up to the required amount by tickling every gorilla in the vicinity. But my God, what a slog, what an uphill battle. I think to myself, what a job well done and try my magical chest pound. Alas, there's bloody more of course, isn't there? I have to get the bloke to level two charisma and two body, the bastard. So we drum and drum until the bloke hates me and never wants to see a bongo again in his life. Then here we are, the moment we've all been waiting for, our conclusion. The gorilla with the colourful markings clambers upon the altar of life. They beat their chest so hard, they break a few ribs in the process whilst partaking in the beating. And look, an abundance of smiles as the tree blooms and the animals cheer with glee. Hurrah! Absolutely amazing. You have cured the tree of life. As a reward, I grant you fast gorilla fanship. Lovely jubbly. You are the true hero, the truest of all. And with that, one receives the fucking tree doctor medal and fast gorilla friendship medal. Jack of all trades me. In chapter 10, hope for a hero. Tired, hungry and old, the king returns to the ruins of his former home. The king sat next to a baby gorilla and shared the last piece of fruit with her. This good deed caused the wilted flowers of the tree to glow. He realised that there was still hope to create good energy and restore the land. If he could activate an energy stone, a hero could find their way to the tree of life and save it. <laughs> Guys, what the fuck is that jump scare? I just got fucking fingered by the king. Anyway, after all that excitement is gone, a uh, gorilla dies, I guess, and I guess that's it. We saved the tree of life. And the moral of the story is that all animals are good and the man is bad. Well, that's it. Four games I'd never heard of before, all done. I think I didn't realise they were Sims games because if we analyse the box art here, they don't look like the usual Sims games, do they? The fun the plum bob, the bob of the plum, is not very prominent. But I don't know what I'm talking about, I'm just a bloke. But there were more things to unlock than the like cheats and stuff to get cool animals. But yeah, if I'm being totally honest here, I did actually like these games. Well, apart from the animals dying, but that's life in it. This is the real world, grow up. But I particularly enjoyed the Africa games and the Wii one. Oh my God, I love the story and the music. So if anyone can rip that soundtrack from the game, I'd be very grateful. I spent a month trying to convert like this SNS file into something and I don't really get it. As I mentioned before, I am just a bloke, but I managed to get the Africa DS soundtrack somehow. But yeah, someone get that Sim Animals Africa OST for Wii on YouTube ASAP so I can listen to it on my commute. Anyway, I'd like to thank one of my longtime subscribers, Chatty Chatter Channel, for requesting this game. I hope you enjoyed the video and I did the game justice. Thank you everyone if you made it this far into the video and enjoyed me slagging off animals. Until next time, fellas. <coughs> Ha 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 ha!